All right, back by popular demand from the top rope, the head of CCW Wrestling, also known as the Brazilian Bomber, my good friend Nelio. Welcome to the show, well, brother. Brother, I'm so happy to be back. You have no idea how amazing this podcast is going to be. This video cast, back to the Happy Customer cha Channel, back to a new year, brother. I can't wait to talk about what we're talking about. We're going to talk about something that we love, the movie Iron Claw, about the Van er Von Erich family. But before we do, I think a little history, and it's, and it's your business, let's take us back, right? How wrestling was back before Vince McMahon uh, consolidated the territories. Um, they had what was called the, the territory wars, right? Where if you were in certain districts and, and it worked like almost like a cartel, you owned was, a territory. It was, it was a cartel, yeah. It was a cartel, right? Yeah. And nobody stepped on each other's toes. If you had Texas, you had Min Minneapolis, were AWA, so on and so forth. Walk us through the history of the territories and then kind of where we're at today. I'm going to give you a condensed version, Dan, but yeah. yes, you hit it pretty well. So uh, the NWA, the National Wrestling Alliance, who we're currently working with uh, uh, as well now, but uh, was a governing body, uh, was basically an office based out of St. Louis uh, at the time of St. Louis. And if you had any type of uh, issue with a rival territory, um, uh, for instance, Texas, I think had three territories. They had the Funks uh, um, and they had the Von Erics, uh, the Funks in, in Amarillo, and then uh, uh, the Von Erichs out of the Sportatorium. Uh, Florida had championship wrestling from Florida, which is incredible. You had yep. Mid-South. Um, uh, you had uh, Jim Crockett. Uh, and then actually originally, you know, Vince McMahon Sr. had the Worldwide Wrestling Federation in, in New York. You mentioned the AWA. Yeah. Um, you mentioned, um, man, the California Vern Gagne and all those guys, yeah, Vern Gagne yeah. and the AWA <laughs> and everything. And what was amazing about that time was you had a different style of wrestling, like Texas. And it's cool too, because Texas had that Texas style of wrestling, which was very much about, you know, uh, honor and personal honor. And you're coming from Texas, which is a livestock state yep. that is a state where it's, you know, you had to be a big, tough Texan to make it in Texas. So it was a lot of, you know, you besmirched my honor. You hit on my girlfriend. That was the best type of wrestling at the time. Right. Florida, like Florida is, was a wild heat territory. So in Florida, you would have devil worshipers. You would have, you know, Kevin Sullivan, you'd have devil <laughs> worshipers. You'd have crazy angles. You'd have hot angles. Um, um, and then you would look at places like uh, mid Atlantic, which was, you know, kind of flares territory where they love great wrestling. And it was that workman North South Carolina vibe. And then in worldwide, uh, uh, in, in worldwide wrestling uh, federation in New York, it was the land of the giants, Andre, the giant, Bruno right. San Martino. So it's like the big shoulders, New York city, like we're the biggest, we're the best. And that's what they did. So what happened is wrestling had its own flavor. Wrestling was before Vince McMahon controlled wrestling almost in, almost in its entirety, um, the different flavor of professional wrestling just made it better. The regional flavor, I remember, you know, personally, uh, and I called it Texas wrestling at the time. So I'm a kid and I couldn't get enough wrestling. And then I remember one night uh, here locally, Channel 33, I had my TV and the, 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 bu the bunny ears, you know, trying to, and all of a sudden at 12 o'clock, because it would be a replay, they played at 12 o'clock at night on Channel 33. And I'm looking at the grainy picture and it, that's how I got introduced to the Von Eriks and the Sportatorium. Right. And like, and I was like, oh, this is, there's a different kind of wrestling other than Florida Championship Wrestling and, yeah. and, uh, and some of the regional other guys. And, and, and it was really based on, you know, uh, the Von Eric family, the father, he created, you know, his sons, these amazing baby faces that people loved. And it was, a, you're right, a different style, an electric style of wrestling uh, that brings me to the movie, right? Yeah. Uh, there's a movie out. If, if, if you haven't checked it out, it's called The Iron Claw. And it's a story about uh, the Von Erich family and and um, their highs and their lows and, and lots of tragedy and, and a really a beautiful, in my opinion, a beautiful brother movie. But um, I, I had to talk to someone about it. And there's no other person I'd rather do a little bit of a movie review with than my good friend Nelio. Talk to I me about it. the movie. When did you watch it? G give me the highlights. Actually, what they got right, what they got wrong, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I've been very, very lucky because uh, one of the producers of the film, um, they came to South Florida and they did a private screening to my, for myself, my, my company, yeah. uh, some of my uh, top guys and, uh, you know, obviously Gangrel and, and, and Dan Evans. And we all watch it together with one of the promotional producers mm -hmm. and uh, we gave some quotes and um, 
it was good. Uh, it was cool to see it in that setting too. Like uh, I haven't been to a ton of like private screenings with the people <laughs> who were made a movie and, and uh, I, wa- I rewatched the movie last night um, mm. uh, just so to make sure that, you know, number one, nothing changed. Cause a couple people told me things changed from the, from a month ago. And I was like, I don't know if that, like, I don't think that happens, but um, nothing really changed. Yeah. And um, I rewatched it a little bit and, you know, there's two ways to look at it. Like I have five brothers. I'm the oldest of five brothers, which is now that, wow, that's now that I so I, I'm it, one of, I'm one of five kids too. And we, there's four, four, four boys in the family. Yeah. Yeah. So the, at, like what you hit it on the head was, or what you hit on the head is like that, the heart and the love of the, of like brothers, like yeah. as a non wrestling movie, like it, it made me think, it made me think about, my family and my brothers and it made me think about how everything is fleeting um you know there are those aspects of it and then there's also the professional wrestling aspect of it which made things a little bit difficult sometimes for me i think sean durkin's vision was very good i think he's a very good filmmaker so here's my overall thesis of of the movie is yeah the story the reality in this case was crazier and better than what they portrayed on the screen. So we all know there's no spoilers in the movie. We know what happens. Correct. We know that there's a sole survivor yeah. out of five brothers, actually six brothers, if you include uh, Jack Jr., which yeah. they do right. in the beginning of the film. Um, and so you know that it's it's not going to be a uh, – uh, uh, it's going to be a tearjerker, let's say. Yeah, so I mean, so like at a very high level, I- I'm with you. For the wrestling nerds, there's gaps, right? Correct. Um, they're trying to make, they're trying to thread the needle in two ways. One, so that the mass population will Correct. understand this movie. The nerds like us will peel back and go, "Hey, you missed this." It, it's probably Correct. like people who watch the Star Wars movies and also, you know, all the know the geeky nuances and stuff like that. Like, there are some misses. Uh, but if I pulled somebody off the street that didn't know about wrestling, definitely didn't know about Texas wrestling, they would see this movie and probably really like it. Right. I mean, it's well, dark. You, you, you're uh, but, bringing an audience in, you're bringing a completely like a uh, non wrestling audience in and you can't, you can't, you know, wade into the minutia of professional wrestling. Yeah. You have to give the, the heart of the story and it's, and it also can't be four hours long uh, as I was watching it last night. <laughs> right. I, it would have been a better Netflix series. Well, that's what, I, that's exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> what, the limited 11, one hour episode series on Netflix. And I literally started to chart out what the episodes could be about. Um, will, will that happen in my lifetime? Actually, probably because yeah. you know, things can be rebooted and some of that, but uh, as a standalone film for what it was, uh, it was very good. It has a lot of heart. You know, the relationship between the brothers, very, very good. Um, The relationship with Kevin and his wife, you know, I have a, I I felt very in touch with that type of thing because um, I deal with the same issue when I travel, when, you know, running a company, doing all these shows and coming home to my child and my, my child's four years old. I love her. I love spending as much time as humanly possible with her. But there's this aspect of, um, you know, you have to be on the road and you have to be a different person when you're a professional wrestler. Like, you know, say what you will about wrestling being predetermined. That's the way I'll say it. Say what you will about wrestling potentially being, you know, predetermined. You do have to be that character. It's, 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 you know, being a character actor times two. Uh, uh, You know, we hear the stories of Jim Carrey uh, walking around being called Andy Kaufman for. Yeah, 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 yeah. And refusing to uh, break character, uh, there's some guys, and I know know them that can't do that. And I think that in a, it was good and bad for the guys like Devon Eric's because I think that was a story that should be told. I don't think some of those things were told very well in this particular film. So when let you, me, uh, let's but, let's dive into it a little bit. I, I think let's walk through some of the real crazy stories because I think that if you watch the movie, the things that you would not know being a wrestling nerd like we are yeah. about that era of wrestling, uh, world-class wrestling, Texas wrestling, the stories are actually crazier than the movie lays it out and, and, and it would make a great mini series. A hundred percent. I mean, Gino Hernandez was, was, uh, in the movie briefly. Um, and that's another story in itself. It's, it's an incredible story and it's pretty much, uh, at this point, 
well known that he was killed by drug dealers because he was supplying a lot of drugs, uh, uh, not just in and around the Texas wrestling territories, but yeah. in and around Dallas itself, right? And uh, you have Gino in there for a second, but that was one of the things is, okay, you have the lows in this film and there's something that's missed. Man, I don't even call it the highs because they're literal. Some of them are literal highs, Yeah. but <laughs> there's two things. There's two aspects of this. Yes. In the film, there's a, there's almost comical moment where Fritz, who was incredible. The actor was uh, fantastic. The actor who played Fritz was incredible. There's a moment where he's uh, talking to the boys in the locker room and he's giving them a little pep talk that, and there are uh, vials of steroids and syringes yeah. next to them. It's very, uh, um, it's very subtle. You know, you don't really see them injecting like the injecting testosterone or whatever they were doing at the time. Yeah. Um, but it's subtle to show that like, listen, like that was a very open thing back then. You know, you could sit on a, a locker room bench that people can come in and out of and you can put a vial of testosterone there. And Fritz is talking to his sons who he's supposed to be a leader of, et cetera. And the, and the, test, and the test is there, but you have highs also like let's start with, with this. There weren't four Von Erich brothers. There were right. five. Just, yeah. It's crazy. And Chris Von Erich, who is, um, I think Sean Durkin said that he molded him with a, a mic because he felt that the stories were too similar. Right. Chris's story um, is one of the most interesting ones. You know, Carrie's is an interesting story where they told fairly well yeah. of, of, and we can get to the motorcycle accident, which was not portrayed correctly at all. And I think the story of there's a lesson to be learned in that motorcycle accident. And they skipped over that motorcycle accident. We'll go back for a second. So Chris Von Eric, who is you, like, I think we spoke about previously, like it was the runt, right? He was a smaller guy. If you look at videos, he was muscle bound yeah. and he worked out and he did all that he can do. And you're looking at it in the lens of 1988. If Chris Von Eric was wrestling in 2022, he would fit right into any locker room because the size of the guys, you know, right. six foot one, you know, 300, uh, 280 pounds, like my heaviest, maybe 320 pounds. Um, and I was probably like a regular sized guy in 1988. You, you look at monster, David, yeah. David Von Eric is six, four, um, yeah. which is crazy because you have one brother who's six, four and one brother who's five, yeah. six or five. Actually it was five, four. Yeah. I heard. yeah. But there, he was muscle bound. So um, he kills himself because he can't compete. And Fritz says that, like Fritz goes on the news and says, you know, he couldn't make it in wrestling. So he, he needed to kill himself, which is an it's just a crazy thing to say. Yeah, and he killed himself in front of Kevin, correct? Yeah. Of, they, they, they mixed up the stories a little bit. They had Carrie. So, so Fritz found Carrie, if I'm correct. Fritz I think found so, yeah. of two, two of the kids passed on the farm. That 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 and I know. He, he found Carrie, and again, this is, Fritz is such an interesting character. They did Fritz very well in this film, yeah. but in real life, Fritz said that he'd never seen Carrie look so peaceful. It's like I would never in my life. If, yeah, I mean, it, it, my, yeah. It, like, but that's the last thing that I would say. So it's it, it's an odd and it's an odd way to look at Fritz. And there's a moment that happened in real life that I think they skip over in the film that was the perfect ending of the film i don't know if it was the original ending of the film i know that again there's spoilers but like they have the moment in heaven where the brother yeah right 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 right. and it's like that and then and then uh uh doris or doreen his what fritz's wife leaves him they don't really say that she just won't cook him dinner which yeah. is i like that i love yeah. filmmaking like that but there's a moment in real life where uh fritz Near the end, he has brain cancer, and he points a gun at Kevin, and he said you, something to the effect of, you were a coward. That's why you didn't kill yourself. And Kevin said, no, like, uh, I, uh, uh, I'm not a coward. It's it's easy to kill yourself. It's hard to live, Dad. Yeah. And Kevin left, and Fritz put down the gun, and Kevin at that point thought Fritz was going to kill himself. That's an ending of a film that is incredible. Yeah. And I understand why they didn't use that to end the film. But that is the ending. That is the ending of the natural ending of the Von Erich story. You know, you have the beginning. You have Jack Jr., the original brother, the beginning of the curse, really the beginning of the curse. Yeah. Electrocutes himself. They did that so well in the movie. He electrocutes himself, falls face forward in, in the snow, and drowns when he's seven years old. That's so horrible. That is, one, that is potentially the most tragic death yeah. 
in a lot of bets, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you have the end, the natural end, I believe, is Fritz holding that gun to Kevin because imagine the story had he pulled the trigger. You know, that would have been like the end right there. For All right, so let me ask you something. W w walk me to two or three things that you liked about the movie, and then let's talk about casting. Oh, yes. Well, casting, okay, okay. Two or three things I liked about the movie. So um, for the most part, the wrestling scenes are done very well. Um, yeah. Very, very well. Uh, Chavo Guerrero did the, and he's incredible. Uh, yeah. He did uh, for Glow on Netflix. Um, I think now he's the movie wrestling guy. Like he knows exactly how to take a non wrestler correct. and give him just enough to uh, do the correct scenes. Um, I don't want to say who, but a couple people told me that some of those actors were clueless in the brain. So the oh, fact oh, that for sure, sure. <laughs> like, like clueless, clueless. And I think Zach, like someone told me Zach Efron couldn't have a match right now. Uh, he's ready to. I got to so, tell you, I thought he was awesome as Carrie. He got completely no, jacked. Well, you. I mean, not as Carrie as Kevin. I'm sorry, as Kevin. No, well, you, that's the point. You said it, you hit it right in the head. I thought he should have been ca Carrie. I thought so he should have been Carrie. He moment, looks like him. Me and Gangrel, the first moment that it's revealed that the narrator is not is Zach Efron and is Kevin, we looked at each other like, whoa, 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 whoa. I thought the same thing. Zach Efron looks as good as Carrie Von Eric. I think someone told him he was playing the wrong guy because. He eclipsed uh, uh, Kevin Von Erich's physique. Yes. And then you have um, the bear, who's an incredible actor. But he's too small to play Carrie. And it may – okay, so it makes the film confusing. Yes. Because there's moments and multiple moments David dies and they have to choose someone to go and take the mantle and bring the, the gold to Texas. And um, in real life, it was a very easy – uh, decision for Fritz because Kerry Von Erich was a star. He looked like the ultimate warrior. He got to the WWE and I remember, man, I was, he, he had the it factor, old. man, the, 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 the top warrior rush song coming into, I remember as a kid and like, you know, and, and then they eventually called him the Texas tornado. He was fantastic. Like he had the it factor. If it, it is a no brainer. You look at no Kerry Von Erich and you say, he's the guy, he's the guy. And in the movie, you have the guy from the bear who's five foot seven. And yeah. then you have Zach Efron, who's a literal movie star, yeah. who's jacked like Carrie was. And Fritz goes, I'm giving it to Carrie. Yeah. And it would make a lot more sense to the viewing audience why that happened. If they flipped it. It's not like, oh, I'm dad's favorite and I'm five eight. Yeah. <laughs> Carrie Von Eric was six foot two. Uh there's a story. The house. There's, yeah. There's a story. Uh uh, I don't know if it's true or not, or if it's one of those legends where Kerry Von Erich met Arnold Schwarzenegger. They were working out, and, and Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger walked over and said that Kerry Von Erich was embarrassing him because he was always so much, his physique was always so much better than everyone around. And Arnold was getting anxious that this guy who he never didn't really know, yeah. like, <laughs> had an incredible physique. So, and it's the truth, you know, he, yeah, he had was, he was the huge, look. huge, yeah. and he uh, had the look. Yeah, he had all of that, you know. Uh, I, but there, yeah, there was a darker side to Carrie and specifically David, right? Like they sort of gloss over it, but they had other problems, right? They they had trouble in town and they weren't the greatest guys. So I'm not I'm not a, a, a world class historian. Let me start okay. with that. So if you watch, I have watched a lot of it. I like I love it, and I you know so the story as I've always kind of had it perceived, and and it could it not it wasn't there, you know. But I've spoken to people who were there as well. You know, Gangrel knew Carrie, and, and yeah. uh, um, they all the guys worked Kevin until the 90s. You know, he was always around. He was always somewhere. So um, you have these boys, and Fritz is a heel. He comes in, and he does the Nazi sympathizer thing, which right. is territory wrestling. I mean, it can't be done today. You can't even come close <laughs> to what they did no. back then. You can't, like, post-World War II, a guy in Texas, who, by yeah. the way, is named, you know, uh, uh, Jack Atkinson, Atkinson, right. and he's a Texan. Like, he's not a freaking Nazi, you know. Yeah. He, he's German. He is. He has German descent, but and he's not a, a Nazi sympathizer in any way. Right, he's from Texas. Texas. <laughs> he's a Texas good old boy. He's a good, right. you know, um, all American guy. And you, he played that character of Fritz very, very well. Like during the, um, I think it was the we call it the second golden age of professional wrestling, mm -hmm. uh, post gorgeous George pre-territory into the territories why he was positioned with the territory that he had is because he was you know one of the two or three uh top heels at a, at a point in time and he was very good and uh in his later years 
like many um, wrestlers, he, he had the recognition of the crowd, became a baby face. And that's why in their teen years, before coming into world class, before being wrestlers, they were in things like wrestling magazines, the Von Eric boys, hunting, yeah. fishing. And there was it was cool. And it was part of the problem because you have this. It's part of the problem because you have this uh, uh, from from Fritz uh, pressure, but also you have early notoriety in, in local Dallas of these kids. And uh, Fritz had a very boys will be boys mentality to the effect where they were stars. Like they were like a Macaulay Culkin. They were like yeah, a local a stars Coleman. in Texas. Everyone knew who they were, right? The they were yeah. 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 They would, they would get arrested and they'd come home and, and Fritz would argue with the police, you know, boys will be boys. And by the way, if I, or anybody else, even today, I mean, maybe there are examples uh, that exist today that would go and get in fights and go and do these type of things, particularly, I guess, David and Carrie, they would be arrested, but they were not arrested. So they had that. Yeah. They uh, were hellraisers. So yeah. I mean, Fitz w with him, um, he was definitely those fathers that just looks the other way, right? If you, yeah. deliver, you give me a good show, so on and so forth, your bad behavior from steroids, drugs, fights, whatever, I'll look the other way. And I think they, touch on it on in the movie they probably could have gotten into it a little bit uh deeper but 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 the boys were wild well and and not only that just so like uh because i can i i realized like i i realized i liked and uh uh, uh i loved world class more than i remember i really do love the whole story i love yeah. i love like the production and stuff so i could talk about this for eight hours but to be more concise i'm gonna say this wrestling has the highest of highs like in a negative sense, because there's the drugs and there's there's women and there's notoriety. Mm -hmm. You have the Von Eric boys walking in the ring and making out like tongue on tongue. You can go yeah, see this right. video right now. They don't show that at all in the, in the movie. Like they were um, heartthrobs. They were heartthrobs. They could get away with whatever they want. And there were serious highs. Um, David David Manning or David Manning, David Von Eric, and and being the best wrestler and the best worker, being six four, the best talker, like. Yeah. If you take those brothers, he was the best and right. him dying um, started the negativity, but there was a lot of highs before that. They were running an incredible territory with amazing angles, doing amazing things. Wrestling can be the best thing in the whole world, like the glory of professional wrestling, because you have to understand that people didn't even, people knew it was predetermined, but they wanted to believe. So you have this environment, right? The movie glosses over the highs. They don't show Carrie winning the NWA title uh, at the Cotton Bowl yeah, yeah. against Flair. Uh, then they show him riding a motorcycle and crashing immediately, which happened two and a half years later. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't talk about how upset I'm sure they were that due to Carrie's, I mean, some people say like substance issues or anger yeah. issues. I don't know because I wasn't there. I'm not going to speculate. Yeah. They took that. They took the, the NWA title off of him very quickly, like within, yeah. I believe, three weeks, two weeks. Uh, and they did it in Japan because that's, you know, it was a smart thing to do. But, you know, that's a negative. Kerry crashed his motorcycle into a parked police car barefoot <laughs> two and a half years later. And it wasn't confirmed whether he was on drugs or drunk, but you're barefoot riding your motorcycle. They saved his, they saved his leg. Yeah, um, right. They did. They saved the leg in the surgery. And this is an incredible story that, you know, maybe Kevin didn't want the story told, but Kerry wakes up out of the anesthesia and the legend is, oh, my leg looks fine. Yeah. And he gets up and he walks to the vending machine and he crushes his leg. That really? was set in surgery. And they have to amputate a portion of the leg due to the due to the post-surgery issue that they had. That's the legend. Interesting. That is interesting. This, this is a story that you can tell of, of that's the story of uh, uh, Icarus, you know? That's yeah. a guy who feels so invincible that post-surgery where they're reattaching his leg, he's going to think he can just get up and walk. That's an exact, that's exactly what the Von Erics were about. They thought they were invincible. They, were they thought they were invincible, you yeah. You can tell that story. But instead, he wins the title, he comes home, he puts it on the counter, a little bit of music, motorcycle crash. Then he doesn't have a leg or doesn't have his foot. Yeah. And it's like the story was there for you. 
the story of a guy floating Prometheus, right? Too close to the sun. This guy was invincible. And there he loses his leg because of the invincible nature. Who goes and drives their motorcycle barefoot? Who, right. He, a guy who thinks he's invincible. Into, he could have crashed into any car, but he crashes into a police car. This yeah. is a story that could be its own film within itself. You know, yeah, and yeah. So, so much of wrestling is storytelling, right? I mean, it, exactly. It, it, it's exactly, it's exactly. That. All right, so real quick, my biggest beef with the movie. I want to hear your yes. thoughts. Yes, probably the most imitated wrestler in the world is Ric Flair. Okay, correct. It would seem to me that it would be very easy to cast the role of Ric Flair. Correct. I didn't like the guy who they casted as Ric Flair. I mean, he correct. doesn't. He does. He doesn't even do a good Ric. I do a better Ric Flair impersonation. Correct. The guy, the, I mean, do, do you? Is, is, this is the the community is saying we didn't like Ric Flair. No, and and uh, you hit it right in the head. I, I that was baffling. I as I was watching, and I know this has been said afterward, but as I was watching this a month ago, I said, you know what? Put Jay Lethal as Ric Flair. Like if 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 the Little Mermaid can change race, so can Ric Flair. And guess yeah, what? Lethal would have been better. Lethal is has the flair. Uh, you put you put MJF as Lance Von Erich, which was an, an uninteresting story that was not told in the film. He's in the film for a second. How about this? Put MJF, who's the modern day Ric Flair, dye his hair and let him play Ric Flair. There's so many options. You know what? Take Will Ferrell. Put him as Ric Flair. Put him on him. Yeah. Put the eastbound and down makeup back on him <laughs> yeah. and let him let him do it. You know, um, that Flair scene baffling the fact that i think sean durkin didn't want to um he didn't want to expose the predetermined nature of professional wrestling so he did this hybrid Which i kind of like we did this hybrid where like you have to be you're either pregnant or you're not you need sure, to show right. it as a as a as as they're fighting yeah and he's crushing flair's head <laughs> or it's predetermined yeah you know the claw you know the the, the claw oh is, we're going to talk about the claw in a minute the claw is one of the best moves because you give the guy, I don't want to expose the business, but you, you can give the guy a little temple massage. And as long as the guy is taking it. So the fact that they tried to say that Kevin Von Eric crushed Ric Flair's head yeah. to the point of him bleeding. Where would he bleed from being crushed in the head? His temples? Like, what is going on? And then Flair was finally respecting him for crushing his head. You're pregnant or you're not. You know what I mean? All right. They, so, so let's talk a little bit about the Iron Claw. In wrestling moves, you got figure four. What uh, You got a million. Where does the Iron Claw rank? Top seven. <laughs> top, top seven. Okay. Say, give, me, give me number six, one and two. Six, Who's number one and two? Well, I think the greatest finish is the Stone Cold Stunner because you do it to anybody and it has the most uh, uh, amazing, you know, reaction. Um, the figure four leg lock is number two. It's, it, the fact yeah, that Flair, Flair doesn't win a match with it ever, <laughs> but it's an incredible, <laughs> it's an incredible move. Uh, I mean, I can go all the way through the seven. I would take uh, uh, the Jake the Snake Roberts' DDT has to be up there because it was Correct. just a, a, a move ender. It was just one of those quick, like, and sorry. It's also anybody can do. Yeah. Then you have uh, uh, Randy Orton, DDP, you know, Diamond Cutter, uh, uh, RKO, because, again, it can come from anywhere. You can do it on anybody. Uh, uh, that's incredible. And then you can slide in the claw because it's such a – there's so much tension that you can do when you yeah. give somebody the claw. You can work into a corner. You can work into the ropes. Uh, uh, when I first started wrestling, I actually did the claw up top, and I choke slammed the guys. A little dangerous um, for a few reasons, but that was an incredible, you know. And you can do for a heel, you like what they kind of did for Kevin as a baby. Just don't let go of the guy's skull. You know what right. I mean? It's a really cool visual. So yeah, I would say okay. So that would make it top six. So it'd be okay, six. Top six. All right, couple rapid fire questions. You Lay mentioned you're one of five brothers. Which fun Eric would you be? Me personally? Yeah. The least talented one. I'd be that. No. Oh, uh, <laughs> man. It, uh, I'll say this. Like my growing up, uh, Carrie Von Eric was, you know, I, I, I've never been that guy, but right. was the guy for me. And if you, if I would look up to anybody, uh, but if you ask any wrestler a wrestling guy, like uh, Gangrel, like uh, uh, Kevin Sullivan or whatever, uh, David was the guy. Everyone he was the him. guy. Okay. So they died. Right. So he there's, died. Last time you were on the show, there's this text chain of you, Kevin Sullivan, gang grill. And I asked, I just want to be an observer. Maybe include me on it. I just, I, that's, yes. all, that's yes. all I want. I just, I just, I just Run. want a little quick snapshot. All right. Uh, here's something interesting. I truly believe this movie is going to kick off a wave of wrestling biopics. Okay. 
You have finally Vince, who owns the IP of so many of these wrestlers, sells to Endeavor. What is Endeavor? They are run by Ari Emanuel. He's a movie guy. He wants to make money. And I recently heard that they're going to make a movie on the Guerreros. Correct. And and uh, Pedro Pascal, Pascual is going to play one of the Guerrero brothers. Is that correct? Oh, that would be incredible. Yeah. I mean, I think that I, I, I kind of know that story, but I'm so pumped about all the wrestling movies when you think about Bruiser Brody, who was in the movie, uh, Snuka, uh, and the oh. list goes on and on and on. Chris Benoit. Benoit. Chris Benoit. I mean, it's a heavy story, but like, this could be like the mod, like when Marvel early 2000s kick off Spider Man, and then you get 20 years of fantastic Marvel movies. You think we may get a, a wave of wrestling movies? I mean, nothing yeah. would make me happier. I think you just terrified me. So, yes, it's going to happen. It's terrifying. Why is uh, it terrifying? terrifying? I thought you would love this. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it's a very nervous energy. It's a very, it's a, there's a love. You want to, that. You want to get it right. Yeah, it's hard. It's there's some things that are hard, like uh, uh, and those films are not for me, you know, and they're not for the uh, correct. They're not for me. They're they're for the wide audience, which is great, but it's also scary to the perception of professional wrestling is important to me. And you're gonna look at some stories like you don't want to Disneyfy it. No, I don't want to go the other way. I don't want the you know. It's oh, funny to be because dark. they were yeah, parts of me. They dark. Were, I get it. I get it. No, I get it. Terrifying. It's terrifying to see the. You show the whole thing. You show the real. The underbelly is not pretty, man. It's yeah, not. Yeah, you, you, in any business, the NFL, the NBA, you don't want to open the hood of the Ferrari. Yeah, correct. See what's correct. underneath it. Yeah, there's a. There's some bad stuff. If there's some, you know, like people talk about Dark Side of the Ring, and that's been incredible because it's the real story. It's fantastic, one of my favorite it's shows. Wonderful. It's wonderful, and a lot yeah. of people were upset about it. I think to to reach the audiences that are going to see the Guerrero movie or the Benoit movie. Um, I don't think Dark Side hits those audiences. I think those those films will reach those audiences, and then you'll have you know you're going to retread a lot of things that don't exist in wrestling anymore in regards to um, the health standards. You know, yeah. ECW, like you talk about Glow being made a Netflix series. ECW would be the greatest Netflix series of all, but they probably couldn't put it on uh, Netflix because it'd be pornographic and it would be like you know it would be incredible right so it's like yeah do you want do i want to see it oh man i've heard the stories a million times fonzie will you know uh, uh tell tell me uh, everything but i also you can't put the real story 100 percent out there because uh what was going on in 1988 in regards to like uh cocaine and drugs and women is not happening now and that perception you know and i'm not saying on, i'm not saying on any level of course there are levels where that exists where yeah where, but it, it's not even close man it, it, no, it's that media, there's too much oversight yeah yeah too many eyeballs yeah. um which one okay iron claw where does it rank in wrestling movies and let me give you some names you ready the wrestler's number one okay so you got the wrestler what about no uh nacho libre you also That's have Cassandra, the new one. Have you seen Cassandra? <laughs> no, but I will now. I will now. Where does Iron Claw rank for Nelio? Um, man, top seven. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> man, so looking at like trying to remember, you know, if you add, uh, there's an amazing Dusty Rhodes. It's a it's a mockumentary. There's no Dusty's not Dusty's not. Um, he's not like the guy featured in it. But it's called I Like to Hurt People. And it's incredible, and it's it's talking about wrestling, but it's as wrestling as a as a shoot kind of, and it's great. I would recommend watch people this. watch that. Yeah, it's, it's called "I Like to Hurt People." It's very interesting. Uh, so that's got to be up there. The wrestler is number one. It's very yeah. close, close to my heart. Um, um, Nacho Libre is. I mean, I like it as a movie, but I can't consider I'm that. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's a, a silly wrestler. movie. I'll watch Cassandro. Uh, if you look at like man the. If you add documentaries, I mean, there's some amazing. Uh, there's a uh, the rise and fall of ECW. There is. Uh, oh, I've never seen that. Oh, there's eighty something about the WCW when they were riding high and talking about all the backstage stuff. And yeah, they, they they do very well. It's a crazy, incredible documentary. And then if you look for non like WWE has to cleanse and has to like kind of put in their lens of yeah, uh, correct. What, if you look at non uh, WWE documentaries and and guys who are you know in the peripheral. There are some incredible ones like uh, Netflix just came out with the wrestlers, uh, right. which I thought was great. And, and, and you have uh, 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 Freya the Slayer who works regularly with us, who's in that and featured in that. And you have uh, Hollywood, uh, uh, Hollywood Haley J who, man, I, I was one of her first uh, uh, 
matches, you know, four, three years ago, which was 18 years old. And, and that story has been told and it's, it's a huge hit now. So I think uh, you can look at those documentaries and all, any of the dark side of the rings are, are, most of them are very, very good. There's some that yeah. are a little goofy, but in terms of like a film film, it has to be one of the top ones because it's a, a major motion picture that is trying to tell a story about whether it's territory wrestling or whatnot. So it has yeah. to be up there. The heart is there. It's a good movie. Sean Durkin is a great uh, uh, director. The guy who played Carrie is a freaking great actor. And Zach great. Efron was great. No, it, it was overall a really good movie. And you can, even if you're not a wrestling fan, you could take it. Okay. So two quick things. Kevin's wife, Kevin, Kevin Van Eric's wife, that girl. She was she awesome. Does, she does something where it's like, obviously she's incredibly attractive, but she has that. She found the Texas, homegirl regular girl thing and she brought it out very well it made yeah. it made a lot of sense one scene where it's where, where kevin is saying that he was a virgin when he slept with her in the trunk of the, yeah. of the that has got to be a lie i don't know <laughs> I, that is a lie maybe that's a little artistic thing maybe maybe that's kevin telling the moviegoers like yeah no, no i've never been with another woman except yeah. my entire life when i was 24 years old or something in the back of a truck at a college party you know but but uh, that that was incredible, and Fritz was the MVP. Fritz's character was the MVP. Was it accurate? I don't know, you know. But that but he guy should be up for an award. Yeah, yeah he got was great. He should win the award, you know. And yeah. and and just the fact that whatever means Zac Efron used, uh, I'm sure he talked to The Rock. I'm sure he talked to Batista. I'm sure he talked to John Cena to build that type of uh, uh, size as quickly as he did. Oh yeah, he's the huge. Commitment that he had to do that. Yeah. Um, and then, you know do the best to do a off the top rope uh, uh, splash uh, at least pretty well. Like he busted his butt. So all of those and, and, and the guy who played Harley race and I, I know him. Uh, he's an Indian guy. guy. was great. That guy was great. great. Harley race, Bruiser Brody, all of them. Awesome. Great. Oh, and, and obviously thrill Billy, thrill Billy who played uh, uh, Terry Bam Bam Gordy. And then Brady yeah. Pierce who, you know, uh, trains with us and, and, and works with us. Uh, he is, he, I looked at him and I said, like, when he said, I'm playing Michael Hayes. I was like, no, you're not, dude. Like, you are not playing Michael Hayes. And then yeah. I saw him on film and it's like, that is movie freaking magic. Like, I yeah, was like, yeah. he's like a, Michael Hayes is like, was never the in the shape that Brady Pierce is in. It was never the size of Brady Pierce. Like, I was like, yeah. you're a big monster, kid. Like, you're not Michael Hayes. And they figured it out. So that was incredible. Good stuff. All right. You own Florida Championship Wrestling. Give me a quick update. Yeah. Uh, February 10th, uh, the CCW Arena. You can go to ccwrestlingfl.com. We're going to have an incredible show. You'll have uh, Kevin Sullivan there. You'll have uh, awesome. uh, Gangrel. You'll have all of the uh, um, you know Championship Wrestling Florida guys. Saturday, January 13th, a joint show at Revolution with Billy Corgan's NWA. It's CCW wow. versus NWA. We have a huge match, four on four. Um, it's interpromotional warfare. It's downtown Fort Lauderdale. We're Oof. the hometown team, and they came in, and they tried, you know, you're coming at us, and we're going to bring it. So wow, yeah. will, will will the Brazilian bomber be uh, featured in this match? I think I, I think uh, unfortunately, like there's he's <laughs> he's going to have a lot of backstage duties to do that night. Ooh. So I, I unfortunately am uh, I don't I mean I don't want to stop a ticket being sold. So yeah, sure, I'll be there. All right, all right. One day I want you to come in on the show with Kevin Sullivan. Oh, we'll done. Have, we'll, have, we'll have we're building out a new studio. See, uh, We'd love to invite February. you. February, yeah, and in studio, uh, we'll do in studio because you're we'll in studio. Awesome. Please come. We'll have a great time. We'll catch up on wrestling. All right, 100%. you got to break us down, brother. I need a good send off to everybody, guys. Check out. Uh, he just put put out the dates. Check him out on IG. Uh, I've been to his events. His events are fantastic. Highly recommended. Uh, but man, my man, sign us off. Iron Claw, brother. The Iron Claw. Fritz von Erich, one of the greatest of all time. Was it 100%? No. You better go see it, and you better subscribe to the Happy Customer Channel, brother. Take care, my man. Thank you so much.